Hi, Sebastian. I wanted to just go over a couple of corrections for you on the um, Unit 6 assignment. Um, just in general terms, when you're solving a quadratic and you're trying to find the zeros, what you have to keep in mind is that there's three possible situations. Okay. Um, because we're always talking about a parabola, when we're talking about the graph of a quadratic function, um, one possible situation is that the graph will intersect the x-axis at two distinct points, two different points. We call those the zeros. The other word for it is the roots. Um, we also call it the x-intercepts. <laughs> we also That's what we mean when we say solve for x. So there's a whole bunch of different words, and every time they use one of those words, they're talking about that point in particular, these two points. So for one type of parabola, you're going to get two points where it crosses the x-axis. For another type of parabola, it's possible that you just get one point, and I missed there, sorry about that. Um, my stylus is kind of thick for this job, but this should be lying right on the x-axis. So it touches just at one point only, and calculus you'll learn that that's actually called a tangent point. It's a point that touches the curve, where the straight line touches a curve at only one point. Um, what happens there is something like question two, um, where the two roots are the same. So you get two roots, but they are the same number, so it just looks like you have one root, and that's what's happening when you've got it meeting at one point. The other possibility is that either for an upside down or a regular um, uh, uh, upside or a <laughs> opening up parabola, you don't have any points of intersection on the x-axis. So it could look like that, or it could look like that, and it's not going to go to the x-axis, it's going away from it, because all your y values are either increasing in the case of this one or decreasing in the case of this one, and you actually don't touch the x-axis. And when you learn about the quadratic equation um, and finding the roots from the discriminant, that's what we call two non-real roots because the the value for the roots are actually imaginary numbers. They're not real numbers because, you, as you can see, you're never going to cross the x-axis. So for each of these problems when you're asked to solve for x, um, one of those three situations has to be true. Um, I've made a little note here. Quadratic equations, I know you've done the course before, um, don't come up until unit uh, 6 assignment for topic four, so we're not there yet. So I didn't want to see you using quadratic equations to factor these guys. Um, the um, if it comes out to a fraction, like a fraction over six, like this one, then you uh, should be able to factor that and get fractional um, intercepts or fractional zeros for the value of x. The other problem that I wanted to talk to you about was. Um, and it leads back to why I drew all those pictures at the top of the page there, getting back, I, sometimes my thoughts get scattered, it's my ADD kicking in, sorry about that. Um, the reason um, why we have two roots and not one root or zero roots for a question like three or question four and question nine, which we'll look at in a minute, is that when you take the square root of a number, um, you have to keep in mind that like positive 5 squared gives us 25, but so does minus 5 squared. And so if we're taking the square root and we're not told which one we're looking for, we have to include both possible answers. And we know that we should be looking for two roots for most of our quadratic equations. So if you don't get two, it's a good idea to go back and just double check and make sure that you didn't miss one. And in question 3, 4, and 9, you missed one because you took the square root of 8 here uh, in question 3 and you didn't consider the positive and negative square root. That's going to give you two separate distinct roots um, for this equation. The same thing happens in number 4. You've got uh, the square root of 8 again and so when you take the square root of both sides you need a plus and minus situation. For your quadratic formula, which, as I said before, you're not supposed to be using yet, um, but I'll let it go here because I knew you already knew it, but the plus and minus is built in so you don't have to think about the fact that the square root is always positive and negative, and so that's built into the formula for you and you don't have to think about it, which is a good thing but kind of a bad thing because when you're trying to solve it on your own, like in question four, it's easy to forget. 
So let's just have a quick look down here at question 9, because 9 is the same thing. If you take the square root of 25, just like the example that I showed you up at the top of the page, positive 5 and negative 5 will both work. And so you need to include two roots, positive and negative 5 there. Um, and if you had factored it the other way, let's look at it that way so I can maybe prove it to you. Um, 8, a, a, uh, sorry, 8x squared minus 200 equals 0. So let's take an 8 out as a common factor, and I think we're going to get, uh, let me see, how many times does 8 go into 200? It looks like 25. So then we would get, sorry, that's an x squared. Then we would get x plus 5, x minus 5 as a difference of squares factoring. So either x equals 5 or x equals minus 5 are our two roots there. So looking at it that way, I think you can see why there's two roots. Um, and it's something that I want you to remind yourself of as you go forward, because in grade 11 math, you're going to be doing lots and lots of quadratic functions and transformations of functions. And that's a really important thing for you to remember, because the intercepts are used to graph those all the time. Other than that, I would have liked to have seen you try to factor um, 7, 6, 7, 8, 10 um, without using quadratic formula. But after section 4, it doesn't really matter anyway, so I'm not going to I'm not gonna penalize you for that. If it won't factor and you're asked to solve by factoring, then you should just always write, this won't factor. Okay? Alright, email me if you have any more questions.